Welcome to season two of Beyond Sport with Fiona Stewart. In this podcast, we chat with athletes, coaches, and industry professionals at all levels of sport about the benefits that being involved in sport has provided them outside of just the performance side of things. I'm your host, Fiona. I've always wanted to delve deeper into the physical, social, and mental benefits being involved in sport has provided people. This is a completely independent podcast that has been created to share the journey and lessons of top level sporting professionals, but also your everyday lover of sport. If you like this podcast, I'd really appreciate if you could leave a review and share it with someone who you think would also enjoy it. Make sure you hit subscribe on Apple Podcasts or follow on Spotify so you don't miss the release of each new episode. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Beyond Sport with Fiona Stewart. Let's get into today's episode. Today's guest is Steph Kershaw, Australian hockey player who grew up in Townsville. Steph takes us on the journey of falling in love with hockey through the rest of her family playing, the hardships of doing her ACL twice, and how incredible it was to win a silver medal in front of a home crowd at the 2018 Commonwealth Games. Hockey isn't just a sport for Steph, it also helped her step outside her comfort zone and gain confidence. I hope you liked today's chat, let's get into it. Welcome Steph, how are you today? I'm good, thank you for having me. No, thank you so much for coming on. You're currently at the time of recording in isolation in WA. So thank you. Thank you. No, that is okay. I actually have a lot of spare time. So it's it's good to do something a bit different in my day, to be honest. <laughs> Glad to be of service then. <laughs> you are a hockey player. Can you tell us a little bit about your sport and how you got into it? Yeah, so I started playing hockey, I think when I was maybe four or five. Um, My whole family, I have two older siblings, my brother and my sister, who started playing when they were, I think, about five or six. Um, And my dad was a hockey player as well back in the day. I think mum dabbled a little bit, but she was more a social hockey player. She was a bit of a runner. (laughs) So, yeah, I kind of just was always out there from when I was, I think I was born. I think I was kind of out there watching dad or watching my siblings play. And then I picked up a stick at round maybe four or five when they kind of let Minkies start playing hockey. And then... Yeah, I kind of just kept going from there. Hockey is very like a very family orientated sport. So I think kind of if your parents play, you kind of end up playing or if your siblings play, you'll kind of get into it because it's such a mix of like boys and girls get to play. And yeah, it's really good. I think we were out there from like Saturday morning, my first game to like Saturday night, which was when dad was playing. So yeah, we would be out there all day on Saturday. And it was so much fun. Like as a kid, like you loved it. You could run around, play a game in the morning, go like hit at the goal when no one's playing and watch all like the big kids play. So yeah, I had a great time playing hockey as a kid. Oh, that's amazing. And so your whole family played at what level did your dad play at just your local club level? No, he was um, pretty good. He kind of played for Queensland for a long time. I think he played, I think he got 10 years of service for playing for Queensland. Wow. Um, and he was, I think a bit unlucky to not play for Australia himself back in the day. He was from Townsville and very remote kind of place um, in terms of kind of who gets kind of picked and the kind of training available. So I think he was a bit unlucky to kind of not play anything higher than Queensland representative, but um, he was a very good player and kind of (laughs) everyone that I meet now always tells me how kind of good he was and that they knew him back in the day. So yeah, it's quite funny hearing all the stories. Um, that some of my coaches and people I meet along the way have about dad so oh that's such a family legacy do you feel (laughs) was there ever any pressure from that legacy no definitely not I think dad's a very quiet kind of yeah quietly spoken guy um, except when he coaches so he coached (laughs) me for a fair bit when I was younger um, and he's definitely quite a vocal coach and so Mm -hmm. I think yeah that was actually quite funny But no, he was definitely never putting pressure on me and I never felt like there was any pressure. He loves hockey just as much as I do. He still kind of plays now when he's like 60 something. So he loves it. Mum and dad were just super supportive, but they did kind of want me to get kind of get the most and the best out of myself. So it was a very good balance of kind of pushing me, but but supporting me as well. Oh, that's so awesome. And I guess like he would have grown up knowing the opportunities he might have missed out on. So he was able to direct you through the lessons he learned. 
Yeah, definitely. And I think I still kind of ask him when I play, like, what did he think? And like, what, what are some things I could have done better and stuff like that. So yeah, he's a really good kind of sounding board on the field and off the field. If I kind of am like getting a bit too like in my head or something, <laughs> he's just, yeah, a good place to go to kind of be like, just chill out. Kind of <laughs> yeah, he definitely um, gets it. Both him and mum are very across kind of, I guess, what I do, which is really nice. And yeah. Yeah, I could imagine. And they'd understand the whole world that you're in. I know my parents weren't swimmers and they weren't involved in swimming. They tried their best. But um, <laughs> yeah, they had no idea for a few of the first few years until I had to train them into it. So I guess, yeah, like having the parent role as well as being a lover of the same sport as you is really beautiful. Yeah, it is something, I think, something very special that we can kind of share and they can kind of join me on on the journey. Um, yeah. yeah, which is, yeah, really nice. And I think it is that little bit more special that dad obviously plays hockey and, yeah, it's definitely in our blood, I guess. <laughs> well, like, even though hockey's been in your blood, is there a moment that you knew that you were passionate about it or was it just the fact that it was in your blood and you couldn't not be passionate? I actually, I don't really remember like a time where like I realised that I was like super passionate about hockey. I think it was just something that kind of grew from when I was young and just kind of, yeah, just kept growing until I kind of couldn't really ignore it. But I think I was always just very like curious about, I guess, like high performance and kind of, finding out I guess what I was capable of Mm -hmm. and I think hockey is so special in the fact that because as a kid I did kind of athletics and touch football a bit but I just enjoyed hockey so much because there was so many aspects like you had to be fit you had to be fast you had to have skills and you kind of had to be quite strong on the ball as well so there were so many things that you could kind of keep improving and working on and it was just kind of there was always something else to kind of focus on if if you thought you had kind of gotten one bit, there was something else that you had to kind of work towards. So, yeah, I don't know if there was, yeah, ever a, a point where I kind of was like, this is when I kind of became so passionate about hockey, but it definitely grew on me from when I was little and it still kind of is growing now, which is nice. I still love it. So, Oh, yeah. that's awesome. And you're, you're in your mid-20s, so, like, for a sport to still be growing on you, that's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's so cool. And I guess it's kind of given me so many opportunities as well to kind of travel around the world, travel around Australia, meet so many kind of amazing people as well. So it's just, yeah, it's definitely the gift that does keep on giving, although it does get a bit hard every now and then. It is. Yeah, I feel very lucky to to play hockey and kind of live the life that that I live. (laughs) And so you mentioned that you know, you wanted to see how far you could take it. Did you ever dream of wearing the Hockey Roos uniform? Yeah, I think when I first started playing hockey, it wasn't something that I kind of thought about. And then it probably was when I kind of was in my early teens, I kind of started, I guess, realising that you could kind of play for Australia, you could kind of have a career and, yeah, and I guess like get to that, that point in your career. So I think when I was maybe 13 or 14, the Hockey Roos came to Townsville where I was born and was living. And it was just such a cool experience to, to see them play and to be like, that's kind of where I could get to. So I think that's when I kind of started the realisation that that's what I want to do and that's who I want to play for was when, yeah, I was in maybe 13, 14. And then I started, I guess, like having the idols. So like Nikki Hudson was around and she was just like, was like the most amazing player when I was growing up and everyone had a stick. She had a Mazon Black Magic or something and everyone had it. It was like bright pink <laughs> and it was really, yeah, it was great. So, yeah, and then I think when I was maybe a bit older, so 16 to 18, I kind of realised that it was something that was in reach um, yeah. and I just had to kind of keep working hard and hopefully would would make it and I did. So that was that was good. <laughs> yeah, so 2015 was your first was it year is it a team is that like your first year in the squad yeah yeah we call it squad yeah yeah and then so you were on track for the 2016 olympic team then what happened yeah so i debuted in 2015 i moved to perth in 2015 as well to join the the squad and then made my debut later that year um and then it was all going really well i went to my first tournament away to new zealand which went really well as well 
And then, yes, at the end of 2015, just as I was kind of like got some really good momentum and stuff, I did my ACL, which was devastating. I always knew that there was people that had done their ACL and like it seemed like a really sucky injury to have. Mm -hmm. And then I did it and I was like, oh, this is the worst thing in the world to ever happen to me, which was, yeah, it was definitely like heartbreaking. And I was, I think I was only maybe 20, maybe 20, 20, turning 21 the next year. Wow. Um, so yeah, I had never really had an injury before that. Maybe like a rolled ankle was the worst kind of injury I had. And then, yeah, it was such a shock to the system. Absolutely devastating. The Olympics I thought were kind of in reach and it was something mm-hmm. that a goal of mine to go to Olympics since I was, yeah, super young. So that was, that was pretty horrible. So what's the recovery time? Because it's, it's fairly long. Like it's more than your standard few months. Like what's the recovery like for your ACL? Yeah. So it was, I think it it was definitely 12 months. So they didn't want me playing any sooner than 12 months. I think I could pick up a stick again around the six month mark, but that was super basic skills, kind of just reintegrating hockey back into, I guess my rehab. My first one was definitely a lot worse than my second one. (laughs) But have you done two? um, Yes. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. I tore both my menisci or meniscus. I'm not sure how you say it. And so they wanted to repair those. So I think that meant I couldn't walk on my leg for about maybe four weeks, I think. So I just had so much kind of wastage. It might have even been longer than that. It was a while ago now. I can't quite remember. Yeah, my poor leg was just the skinniest little thing it it had ever been, which was quite funny to look at. So that really kind of put me back as well. And then I kind of had to figure out how to walk again and like Mm. have confidence, like putting weight on my leg, Um, which was just, yeah, a massive shock because again, like I hadn't really been injured before that. And yeah, it it is kind of a massive injury. So I think I played again, my first game in after 14 months, I think it was. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's harsh. Like I've myself broken an elbow, which is nothing, but I did that in my 20s I think I was 20 I think I was 20 almost 21 and like I had to learn how to swim again and like so Mm -hmm. I can resonate a little bit with like being a little bit scared to move it especially after it's all wasted away and yeah like my partner broke his hip two years ago and yeah yeah, so it would have been a similar thing he couldn't put weight on it for a few weeks and I saw how his leg wasted away as well but at the same time like neither the two of us had that big of a like a gap before we could participate in our sport again so I couldn't imagine how you would have felt yeah it was a long definitely a very long year um yeah yeah. but it it was quite interesting now kind of looking back on it like I I did learn so much in that year probably like more than I've learned in the last couple of years and I just had to kind of rely on myself to kind of like get back and do all the work and because obviously no one else does the ACL at the same time as you. So it's just kind of, Mm -hmm. you're on your own. And that was also a big shock being in a team sport my whole life. You kind of always have some, at least someone else kind of doing the training with you. So yeah, that was quite interesting learning how to, I guess, train by myself and get myself up for the fitness sessions, which was horrible. (laughs) But yeah, I definitely learned how to, I guess, push myself more as an individual and kind of get the best out of myself in that sense. So that there was definitely some good things that came out of doing it but um I hopefully fingers crossed I'm now balanced with my two ACLs so it won't happen again (laughs) that's it you don't need the third (laughs) yeah exactly we've mentioned you know your injuries is there any other significant milestones along your sporting journey probably the coolest experiences I've had was 2018 I kind of got back playing after my first ACL in 2017 it would have been and that year was kind of just getting back into it I didn't play my best hockey although I was super fit and had done everything right it was just kind of I had just lost a bit of my touch a bit of game sense I guess so yeah so 2018 um, was the Com Games and World Cup year which um, hockey is yeah they kind of have like you have the Olympic year you have kind of like a break the next year and then the year after is Com Games and World Cup in the same year, which is kind of a, a massive year for us. So the Com Games, yeah, that was definitely the massive highlight in my career so far. It was one of the coolest things I've ever done, I reckon. And to kind of have it at home on the Gold Coast was amazing. 
all my family came and like just the crowds and like some of my school friends came and made signs and I was just like this is so weird (laughs) because hockey unfortunately doesn't get that much coverage and Mm -hmm. not that much uh, big of an audience um, a lot of the time so that was cool and then seeing like all the other athletes in the village as well like all the runners and the swimmers it was just yeah a very cool experience to have Um, so that was definitely a massive highlight it did end on a little bit of a disappointment I think we we got the silver medal which was amazing and like I'm definitely very very happy with it but we obviously lost the final um to get the gold medal which is it's hard to be happy with the silver medal when you kind of lose the last game of the tournament and it was kind of the gold medal was in reach so although I'm not unhappy just a little bit I guess still disappointed that we we didn't get the gold medal but other than that yeah it was a an amazing experience and hopefully I can go to the next one in I think Birmingham next year so yeah that would be cool and then yeah a couple months later um it was the 2018 world cup in london that was just like solely kind of focused on the hockey and the women's side of hockey which was amazing it was like a packed stadium yeah it was just really cool it was something that we'd been kind of working on for maybe two years uh the world cup so that was awesome we did super well at the start we made the we made the quarterfinal and won that and then had a chance to win the semi and go into the, the grand final, which we unfortunately lost. Um, so we were playing off the third and fourth, uh, which was still awesome, but we unfortunately lost that one as well. So, yeah, 2018, although it was a really cool experience, was had definitely two disappointing kind of results with the second and a fourth in the last game. So, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed 2018. That was definitely my highlight so far in my career. Yeah, that sounds like an amazing year. Is it just a hockey thing that you put your World Cup in with your Com Games year? Yeah, I think um, that's just unfortunately how it works out because it's. I think it goes off the Olympics, so um, the yeah. World Cup's every four years, but two years after the Olympics, and I think that's yeah. when Com Games yeah falls as well. So it is just a bit of a coincidence. Um, they're on the same year. Does it make it easier to make the team or how's the making the team work? Do you um, like automatically get selected for both of them or how's it work? Yeah. So for hockey, we get every year picked in the squad. Um, Mm -hmm. So each year you kind of go through the selection process to be one of 27 normally. Um, And then before every tournament, so whether that's just um, a test match or if that's the World Cup or Com Games, there's another selection, which is normally 18 players uh for the olympics it's 16 so that's a bit scary that one (laughs) yeah but um so yeah before every tournament there's usually selection if there's something that comes out really close so sometimes there's tournaments like a couple weeks apart they might select both teams and there might be one or two differences um in between so it is nerve-wracking having to get selected selected for every tournament and every year but um you definitely get used to it and then yeah it's not so bad really yeah but at least you get different opportunities if you miss out on one you might have you know if you missed out on com games you might have had the world cup coming up or vice versa yeah and there was um it was a massive like there was quite a few changes between the com games team and the world cup team and sometimes it does help to kind of miss out on selection you get to stay back in training and kind of work on the things that you didn't get selected for and then so it can work in your favor every now and then to kind of not go on a tournament and, and have a bit more of a training block and kind of work on a few things because yeah, some years get really busy and you're just going from tournament to tournament and you don't really get a chance to kind of really focus on, I guess, improving or yeah, fixing something that you need to fix. And it is definitely, it can be a very good, good tool to kind of improve your game. Yeah. Yeah. Get back to the fundamentals of of it. Yeah. Without having to do the competition focus. So you've mentioned a few of like the lessons you've learned, but what are the benefits sport has provided you as an individual that has transferred over to the other avenues of your life? I think for me, I was funnily enough, quite like a shy kid. I felt really uncomfortable like being in situations where I didn't know anyone. And so it's quite funny looking back now, like sport, I guess, has just made me put myself in situations where I was so uncomfortable And I didn't know anyone. And I was just like, this is the worst thing to ever happen to me. (laughs) Um, But I think because I loved 
I guess, hockey so much and I wanted to keep playing. I was just like, I'll just keep going, keep turning up. And then I kind of guess I, I found some confidence and figured out, I guess, how to be confident in myself and what you kind of need to do to like get through uncomfortable situations um, and stuff like that. So, yeah, so I think it's helped me just be more confident, I guess. And yeah. um, like now I could kind of be in a room of strangers and not be that that uncomfortable, which is pretty cool. But yeah, I definitely think all kind of my sporting experiences have helped me definitely grow as a person and grow my confidence and yeah, just be able to be pretty comfortable in uncomfortable situations, which is, yeah, which is awesome. I like that else. one. Yeah. I feel the same way. Are you, a, are you an introvert? I, I think, I think I am. I'm like, when I'm comfortable, I'm very outgoing, but then I think I'm definitely, yeah, probably a bit more introverted when I'm, when I don't know the people I'm with. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same, same. And like, I think sport did the same thing with me. I'd feel like I'd be that person to burst into tears in front of my class giving an oral presentation. That would be me. But I'd practice poolside and I'd make my like squad mates listen to my my speech before I would do it at school. And then yeah. slowly but surely like I can easily yell in front of like 50 kids now and I have no issue. Yeah. And it slowly like transfers out of, you know, the pool environment to the greater sport environment to your everyday environment so I really like that one yeah yeah it's definitely it's funny isn't it like kind of the lessons you kind of start in your sport kind of grow to to outside life as well which is which is awesome yeah yeah and it's really important like I think that's why sport's so important for kids like you don't have to play forever and ever but if you can learn those lessons it makes life as an adult a little bit easier yeah, definitely. And I, there's just so many things you can kind of relate from, I guess, like your sporting life into normal life. And yeah, I think it, it just gives you so many skills to kind of persevere and be better equipped, I guess, in, in everyday life, which is I'm very thankful for, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And if you were to, say, speak to your younger self or another budding sports star, is there a lesson you've learned along the way that you want to share? I think my coach when I was training in Queensland actually I think he only said it once but for some reason it just stuck with me until like well still now Mm -hmm. um I don't think he made it up I think someone else said it but he he said the quote the harder you work the luckier you get and so (laughs) yeah you know it yeah yeah my coach said the same thing yeah (laughs) yeah and I think yeah that one's just stuck with me because like it just made so much sense it was like the more work you put in, the more of the outcomes you're going to see and you're going to feel like you have gotten so lucky or like you've made a team or you could do something that you couldn't before, but it's actually, I guess, all the work that you have put in to that point kind of got you there. So, yeah, I just thought it was really cool and something that, yeah, I've had stuck with me for, like, yeah, however many years that that's been since he said it. So, yeah. Well, I hope that you share this with him and that you and that he hears you quote. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. He probably doesn't even remember it, to be honest. It was probably just something he said, just like a quote he'd heard that day and he has no idea that I still think about it. So, so I'll have to tell him one day. Yeah, and I think, you know, you've probably seen it with the coaches you've experienced, but they really do make such an impact on your life. And he might not have known you were going to represent Australia but, you know, you're donning the hockey roos uniform and here you are remembering something that he said to you years ago. So that's really special. Yeah, no, he was, yeah, he was a great coach. And, yeah, he um, was, yeah, kind of he was with me for the two years I was in Brisbane um, before I made the move to Perth to the hockey roos. So, yeah, that was kind of when I made all the improvements kind of to get into the, into the hockey roos squad. So I, yeah, have a, have a lot to thank him for. He, he would be very happy just to see all of us, all the Queensland girls representing Australia. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> Have you been involved in a project where sport has been used to develop the community? I was lucky enough to um, actually be in a program for the last two years. This year I only went up once. But Hockey Australia goes up to the Pilbara in WA, mm-hmm. um, which is just regional WA and kind of does a school program where we visit some schools and teach them hockey. And it's not anything kind of 
crazy. All we do is go there and give them a stick and kind of let them try it out. But it's just, it's a lot of fun. Like, I think I have more fun maybe than the kids do because <laughs> like they just seem like they just love it. And it's just something different, I guess. They get to get out of class, go pick up a stick and play hockey. And I don't know if they have any, they might have a small hockey club there or or kind of no facilities really to have a hockey club in some of the places they go. Um, so it's definitely something they wouldn't kind of be able to do if we didn't go up there, which is awesome. It's awesome for hockey as well to kind of get the sport into, into smaller places in Australia. They just, yeah, they seem to have a great time and it's super fun to see how much they enjoy it. And But I think it is, it's quite surprising to see, I guess, like how much people kind of want to know about what you do and kind of the sport you play and how you live your life, I guess. So it is funny to kind of see so many people just curious about kind of hockey and, and that stuff. And I try to, I guess, the older I get, realise that people just want to be kind of informed and kind of want to come along for the journey. So, yeah, it's super fun when, when I can kind of bring someone along with what I do and share with them kind of the highs and lows of playing sport and, and stuff like that. It's probably something I haven't really acknowledged that people, I guess, enjoy. So, like, does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 that's great. <laughs> like you know, sharing your journey and your experience and there might be a 14-year-old girl who's just wants to play socially and she might relate to what you're, you know, you've gone through and yeah, that's really awesome. You're obviously inspiring these kids from the regional towns and the metro towns, I'm sure as well, but you know, the kids that might not have that opportunity, you're going out and you're giving them a go and who knows there might be a budding hockey roo there in the coming years. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was definitely inspired when the Hockey Roos came to Townsville because even though we're not that small of a, of a town, we still don't get that many kind of events or sporting events there. So that was super cool. So it, it would be awesome to kind of be able to go to a few more rural places <laughs> in Australia to go and play. But, yeah, it kind of is what it is. And we go where the tournaments are, unfortunately. But, yeah, it is cool to when you can, can kind of get away and try to help kind of inspire kids to play hockey or just to kind of be sporty in general so yeah oh that's amazing and I think well there was an Olympian I think he's an Olympian um that came to my school Duncan Armstrong I don't really I don't even know what sport he was and I feel really bad but my parents were really like excited about it and I was like oh yeah that's cool like but it's cool that you, you know you guys are really relevant and especially with the results in 2018 like I think you put a bit of a stamp on women's hockey in Australia. I know we certainly heard a fair bit more on the news after that. So, yeah, good on you guys. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Yeah, we do kind of try to do our bit to kind of get hockey out there because it is quite a sport that kind of goes under the radar a bit. So hopefully we can keep kind of winning some medals and getting it out there. Yeah, no, well, hopefully 2021, Tokyo 2021 (laughs) brings good things. (laughs) In saying that, where do you see the future of sport? That's a tough question. (laughs) I mean, for hockey, I think the female sporting push, especially in the last couple of years, has been so amazing. And there's so many more girls kind of taking up, whether it's AFL or soccer or swimming or rugby league even. I think that's been, yeah, probably the best thing that's happened um, for women's sport. Unfortunately for hockey, because we were such a, a strong female sport, it's mm. definitely taken away a bit from from hockey itself. So I think we just have to, as a sporting organisation, just do a bit more extra, um, whether that's advertising it or just, yeah, pushing, I guess, maybe the results we're getting, just to make sure we don't lose too many kind of young girls to, to other sports, even though I'm super happy that the push for female sport has just gone in definitely the right direction. Um, and there's so many more kind of sports available for us to to play and young girls to play. So, yeah, but I do, the part of me that loves hockey, I'm just like, no, play hockey, don't go anywhere else. <laughs> but um, I think sport in Australia is always going to be key to kind of our, I guess, our culture. But I think there's still a little way to go with, with the women's side of things as well. Just the more professional kind of path and recognition, I guess. Yeah, we still have a have a little way way to go. So hopefully I can do my bit to kind of help that and kind of get the, get, yeah, get the girls, I guess, the recognition they kind of deserve. Yeah. Because we do, I guess, put in a lot of, a lot of hours and 
a lot of passion to, to our kind of our chosen sport. So yeah, we definitely do deserve the same recognition. So hopefully in the years to come, it kind of grows and grows. Yeah. And I guess like AFL is probably a good place. We might see that first, like the com- commercialization of the sport will happen when the recognition happens and all at the same time or one after another. I don't, don't know which one comes first. Is it the chicken or the egg? But yeah, I think once they can like commercialize it a little bit more than like the sponsors are in and then, you know, they can get more coaches or, you know, less volunteers and then people can start getting paid for, you know, the work that they're doing in those areas. And yeah, I think that's maybe hopefully in the next 10 years. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's exciting, though, for the like all the young girls coming through, like they have this path that they can see so clearly. And I think we're just going to see such like so many amazing, talented girls, I guess, coming in the next couple of 10 years. Yeah. And the sports itself are just going to be phenomenal and it's going to be amazing. So I'm I'm super happy that it's kind of happening in in my lifetime, which is cool. And we get to see that. But hopefully sooner rather than later, it all starts to to happen. Yeah. And I guess even looking back, like potentially if we have daughters down the track, like our daughters will have more opportunities than what we did. And, you know, hopefully their daughters won't need to, but it could then, you know, flow on generations to come. And I guess, I don't know when, was it like the fifties women were allowed to vote? I I think honestly, yeah, it doesn't, it was not that long ago, which is just incredible. So I guess like when you look back, What's that, our grandparents? Like, we're not doing too bad. (laughs) Mm, Yeah. We've got more to come, but, like, yeah, when you look back, at least we can play sport. in the right direction. Yeah, Yeah. exactly, exactly. And, yeah, people can make a career out of it. If not, we're not making as much money, but it's definitely, yeah, which is is awesome. And, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's just so good for, for Australia. And I feel very lucky to be kind of in this country where it is taking off so flourishing and, yeah, it's awesome. And I think the girls um, like yourself who are involved in the sport are really passionate about that. And, you know, you're all doing your bits and speaking out and talking about it and raising the awareness so that it will change. And I think that's amazing too. Yeah, I think because obviously being in a squad of 27, we all are so passionate about it. I don't think there's anyone that's not. And so, yeah, it, it is such great, like a very empowering kind of position to be in having 30 odd girls and coaches as well all kind of striving for for female sport and yeah to just um be a bit more of the normal and yeah recognize as we were talking about so I feel yeah it's just so so great that I am kind of involved with people of a similar thought process and and passion so yeah it's it's awesome to kind of have that many girls around me that all are very yes powerful amazing women so it's great (laughs) And so that's the future of sport in general. What's next for you? For us, hopefully Tokyo 2021. We don't seem to have too many competitions before that just because the world's so crazy. But I think we might be trying to go away for a bit of a camp before um, the Olympics. So trying to go to Darwin or Townsville, I'm hoping, but it's looking likely to go to Darwin maybe. So we'll go do a bit of a heat camp there and then head over to Tokyo, which will be really hopefully exciting um it will definitely be a weird tournament considering we haven't played international matches since Mm. January last year which is just unheard of kind of before Olympics but we are very lucky to be in Australia and have so little COVID here that training for the last few months has been basically unimpacted so yeah Tokyo and then we've got Com Games and World Cup the year after Um, so it's all gonna be a bit of a crazy two years but it'll be awesome if it all hopefully goes ahead Oh, well, I'm very excited for you and I, um, I'll i be cheering you on. I'll, be, I'll make sure I watch it, even if there's a time difference. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well, Steph, thank you so, so much for joining us today. Um, it's really been awesome to share your story and I can't wait for it to air. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to another episode of Beyond Sport with Fiona Stewart. If you liked this episode, please share it with someone that you think would also like it. If you want to find out more, you can find us at Beyond Sport with Fiona Stewart on both Facebook and Instagram. Until next time.